Some people are afraid of the heights. Well, today we're delving into the depths on At Your Leisure. I'm Darren Kinder. And I'm Jill Kinder. We're in the desert today finding out how you can learn to scuba dive in a landlocked state. From there, we'll follow Chad and me as they head down the Pacific Coast Highway on their continuing RV adventure. What will they discover on their journey? Well, you'll want to keep it here to find out. Finally, Reese Stein tries to catch the big one at Utah Lake. Own the outdoors with At Your Leisure, coming up now. At your leisure, I'm Jill Kinder. And I'm Darren Kinder. And today we're out at Sea Base, which is out in what looks to be the middle of the desert, but it's actually not too far from Salt Lake City, and it's a great place for you to learn and, and get experience of salt water diving. Yeah, we're actually going scuba diving. It's the middle of winter, but out here they have warm springs that are fed, there's actually salt water springs that are feeding these pools, and we're gonna go scuba diving. Yeah, and th th it's really a fun place because, you know, you it's it's close to town, they've got a great facility. You know, like you said, it's the middle of winter. Maybe you're thinking about going down to the Caribbean for the winter. This is a great place to come and get that introductory lesson or, uh, you know, or get, get your refresher done get or refresher whatever. Course, you bet. Well, we're going to get ready to go scuba diving. And we're going to get our gear on. And while we do that, let's learn a little bit more about Sea Base. Millions of years ago, they had Lake Bonneville. It went from up into Idaho, clear down to, I think, Cedar City, but it was a salt water lake. They don't know how salty, but if you go over along the uh, water lines on the Wasatch Front dig, you'll find seashells. Well, because we're so close in elevation to uh, the Great Salt Lake that all the minerals went in the ground. So as our springs come up, they come up salty, just like the ocean. That's how we're able to sustain the fish life that we have out here. I certified out here August of 90. That's when it really became open to the public. It is a brainchild and creation of George Sanders and Linda Nelson trying to find a better spot and a better way to take care of students for their open water training as part of scuba certification. You can bring your family out. We can put kids in here and they can swim and snorkel with the fish during the summer and feed the fish, they'll probably never ever get to the ocean. So it's kind of cool to be able to see the fish that we have out here. We have three different type of tanks. We have the steel tank. These are aluminum tanks, which hold more air. And then we have what they call nitrox. And the nitrox, you have to take a special class for that, but it lets you stay yeah. under longer. Okay. and lets you, uh, you're not near as fatigued when you use that. All right. It can dive all day for $20. If you need equipment, we've got absolutely everything here you need and you can rent that. If you love any kind of adventure and you want something that's completely unhabited or different than what you're used to, try scuba diving. Well, we're going to get in the water and we're going to take you with us. But before we do that, we need to go on a travel adventure. And it's actually Chad and Rhea on the RV adventure. So while we're pretending to be on the coast, they actually are. Greetings everybody from sunny Southern California. That's right, it's sunglasses, capital of the world. <laughs> we got a pass on it, we get to wear sunglasses today. Yeah. We are starting the third installment of our RV series and our destination today, our itinerary is going to take us up the beautiful and charming Pacific Coast Highway past all the beach towns from here in San Diego at Mission Bay all the way up to Newport Beach. And let me tell you, if you could smell this wonderful ocean, the breeze, it's beautiful. The salt, the foam, the pelicans flying around <laughs> in their strange way, diving at birds. <laughs> so comical they can be. We are going to explore while we are making our trek some of the many various spots that you may want to visit, come rain or shine. You uh, will see the Midway. We're going to try and find out a little bit of John Wayne history that lies along this highway. So we have a big itinerary planned. We're packed. 
ready for any contingency that comes our way. So as they say, damn the torpedoes and full speed ahead. Let's go. Once you hit San Diego, there are hundreds of different things that you can and should do at different trips. From stopping on Coronado Island at the old Hotel Del Coronado to all of the inland stuff and zoo and places to go. But our first stop on this trip was the USS Midway. Every time you get on that thing, you see something different. And it was just, uh, you just feel the strength and the power and the freedom of the United States of America. <laughs> Well, I did like this, the fact that they had an entire collection of planes from the very beginnings of the Midway, which was put into service during World War II, all the way through the Vietnam era planes that flew off of that, uh, in that engagement. You know, to us, the Pacific Coast Highway is kind of an iconic trip along the winding shores of the Pacific Ocean, and so it is one of the oldest roads in California as far as the route goes. I think really one of my favorite parts of riding along the Pacific Coast Highway in an RV was you're up kind of high so you can see, which is really nice, and you just can see all the action on the beaches and all the cute little homes and the towns that we went through. And it's just everyone is, takes a lot of civic pride in their homes along uh, Highway 101. That's one of the charms of the Pacific Coast Highway. Not only do you have the panacea of the ocean that's always just either within sight or within smell, but you wander in and out of these little towns, and some of them really haven't changed that much. Some of them tremendously. But it's that exploration of seeing the character of each little community as you wander into it and how different it is. And one of our last stops on the Pacific Coast Highway was John Wayne's yacht, the Wild Goose. It was so much fun to tour that boat. They have it pretty much, they've done a little bit since Hornblower Motor Yachts bought it and turned it into a charter boat. Most of the original John Wayne stuff is still there. It was actually fun to sit on that bridge and prop my foot up on the door like John Wayne did. In the captain's a, chair. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then just to see how that old minesweeper worked and how you got down into the engine room. And it was so old down in the engine room. It was just cool. It was really awesome because you could tell there was a lot of love on that boat. He took his family out with him all the time on that boat. And you could just feel the energy on there. It was really a wonderful experience. Any of the little things that build up during a day, nothing like a red sky at night with the crimsons and the yellows to just make it all wash off and it disappears in the surf in front of you. When people look out at the water, it's very, it's just very inviting. And so when you have this gorgeous sunset and you're just walking along with, you, you know, your significant other, your, your spouse, your family, everybody's just relaxed and they don't want to be anywhere else. They want to be right there. And you forget about all the hustle and the bustle of life and you just enjoy nature and the beauty of Southern California. Well, as we end the third leg of our journey, sitting here on the beach in Newport Beach, California, don't you kind of wish you were here? Because where most people watch our show, it's not this warm and sunny. That's right. We're here at Newport Dunes Marina and Resort. And seriously, this RV resort is absolutely spectacular. We're talking five star. You have everything, pools, hot tubs, your beautiful beach here, your paddle boards, your incredibly bistro restaurant they have here. It's, it's everything, but you get to stay in your RV. That's true, and of course, <clears throat> you're just a stone's throw away from the Pacific Ocean. We're literally right next to Balboa Island in Newport Beach. It's just around the corner. That's it for this leg of the trip. We will see you in our next junket. We will be back in the desert in search of ghost towns. Outer day in the trees, a morning of crisp air and blue skies, a winter destination in your own backyard. Twillin County is all of them in one. It's time to experience a new adventure you never knew you were missing. It's time to find out what's just over the mountain. Twillin County, Utah. The Wasatch Front is your home. Twilla is your backyard. 
The Boat Show and Water Sports Expo is here. Shop, compare, and save on hundreds of 2015 boats. It's your best time to buy. Meet and watch wakeboard pros ride the rail jam. The Boat Show, Thursday, February 5th through Sunday the 8th at the Southtown Expo. The place to buy new boats and accessories with special show financing. ABC for Utah and CW30 invite you to the Boat Show and Water Sports Expo, February 5th through the 8th in Sandy. Save at utahboatshow.com. The Boat Show is here, better climb the boat. can't figure out this equation. Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. I'm sorry. I'm from Triple S Polaris. You missed the most important variable of all. Service to the power of three. We take service that seriously. Now, where is my Nobel Prize? Want to know what service really means? Come to Triple S Polaris. Service to the power of three. Well, welcome back to At Your Leisure. Our product review today is the new Skidoo Expedition Ace 600. And what that is, is it's a four-stroke, kind of a utility model, but this is nice for, like, getting your family up to the cabin, taking a nice drive down to Mirror Lake Highway, maybe go over to Bear River Service and get yourself a cheeseburger. But it's also good for, you know, getting out here in the powder a little bit. You can still get out and play with it because it does have a 154-inch track on it. Now this is a 600cc four-stroke machine. It has reverse. A couple other really nice features on it is that it has several different power settings on the motor. So you can go from sport to standard to economy. And each one of those drops down the horsepower about 10 to 15%. Now there also is a key that you can put on it that it will only allow the machine to go up to 25 miles an hour. So if you wanna let your kids take it out and play a little bit, but you don't wanna get in too much trouble, just pop that on there and away they can go. Now the one thing that's really unique on this machine is that it's a fly-by-wire, which means the throttle does not have a throttle cable, it is hooked up to electronics, so basically when you push your thumb down, the, the engine knows what you need and, and opens up the valves to make it do what it's supposed to do. One of the unique things about this Expedition is that it has a fan on it. So if you're out on one of those spring days where it's nice and warm and you're just going down a groomed trail, that fan will kick on and keep the machine cool because it also has intercool so when you're out in a nice powder day like today, that will keep it cool. Now the seat is really nice because it's stadium seating so the back seat's a little bit higher. It also has very large handholds, makes it super comfortable for your passenger. There's a nice large cargo bin in the back and it also comes with a trailer hitch so if you want to pull a trailer behind it, a sled, uh, it has the ability to do that as well. Now this Expedition is built on a Summit chassis, so it has a 154 track on it, 16 inches wide, so it can still go through the snow just like any other Summit does. I mean, it's a little heavier because of some of the other parts on it, but don't be afraid to take this out and go play with it a little bit. Now this is a, definitely a unique machine that you ought to check out. Get into Weller Recreation and Camus and let them show you this model or about the 20 other different types of machines they offer up there. And believe me, those guys are real experts. They got snow right in their backyard so they can take them out, test them, try them. You'll definitely get on the machine that works best for you. Well, I'm Darren Kinder. We'll see you next time. You climb. We invent. You carve. We refine. You side hill steeper mountains. We develop more responsive technology. You never stop. We never stop. The 2015 Ski Do Summit. Escape gravity and soar over the world at this week's featured Utah State Park, the Flight Park State Recreation Area. 
the natural contours of the point in the mountain on the south side of the Salt Lake Valley have created one of the most perfect areas for paragliding and hang gliding in the entire world. Flyers from across the globe train on the north and south sides of the ridge, reaching heights of thousands of feet in the air. Opened as a state recreation area in 2006, the flight park brings out hundreds of gliders every year. Local instructors offer training to anyone interested in learning how to fly and leave the world behind on a simple gust of wind. Contact the Utah Hang Gliding and Paragliding Association for more details. Utah State Parks, adventures for everyone. scuba diving and yeah. this is a really fun place because there's a lot of fish down here even a shark even a shark could you could feed the fish yeah <laughs> and they're hungry let they're me hungry. tell you bring your children <laughs> <laughs> Darren and I've been certified for a while but we've never dove out here and it's it's pretty cool yeah. and it's not too far from Salt Lake so there's a lot of places to kind of come in and go out and tunnels and all kinds of fun little adventures out here so we're gonna go feed the fish why don't you come with us I like scuba diving because it's going somewhere where the, you have to shut your cell phone off, leave it at the surface, you're, you're down there, you're self-contained, and you, you get to move around in an element that's not your own, and you're almost completely weightless. I don't feel the weight of gravity on my back, on my knees, and I can swim freely, and it's quite an enjoyable experience. It's one thing to go dive in a swimming pool, it's a whole other thing to get in water like this where you've got to really rely on your senses and not panic and do what you've been trained to do. Yep. They say that it's uh, sometimes the water's a little clearer, but today was a little a little hard to see. That's because we were stirring it up a I, lot. I, that might have been <laughs> for sure. But then when we got into the warmer water and we got to feed the fish, that was really fun. And they were hungry. <laughs> they were really hungry. <laughs> the water here is very close to what the ocean is. So if you can dive at sea base, you can dive anywhere around in the world. And so we're going to wait the same, we're, it, the water's going to feel the same, we're going to swim the same. Neptune Divers and Sea Base is really and truly a dive shop feeling. When they come to Neptune, what we do is we put them in a class, we have a six week class, we have a lot of pool work, we put them in the pool, we teach them a bunch of skills. But you know, the pool, you don't get lost in a pool. It's pretty hard to get too deep in a pool. So we, we bring them out here where the water's a little wilder. It's still not too deep. And we take them out here, we, we, we put them through all the skills, make sure that they can rescue themselves and rescue their buddy. And they're equipped with everything necessary to go out and dive as, as and have a lot of fun as divers. We have to take into account that we're putting them on a system which allows them to breathe underwater. So essentially, it's a life-sustaining system, and we want them to know it, understand it, and feel comfortable with it. So we try and provide that uh, head-to-toe service from the get-go, so people have that comfort level, and they have no fear and trepidations about getting in the water and breathing air underwater. It was so cool because they were they would just try to eat anything. They tried oh. to eat your fingers and your Oh, they come right up to your suit, face yeah. mask and bonk yeah. up your face mask. That was pretty cool. You'd you look eye to eye to the fish. That is one thing unique about here because when you're out in the ocean, that rarely happens. Usually they'll keep arms distance from you almost all the time. Yeah, you and to have them come close. right up in your face is, is a fun experience. Yeah, a lot of times in the ocean they'll get close to you, but they get spooked pretty quickly and yeah. go back away. It's just a phenomenal feeling from start to finish. It's a phenomenal sport. It really is. Well, this has been a lot of fun out here at Sea Base. It's definitely a different experience. So if you're a diver, you're really going to enjoy it. But for right now, Reese Stein is at Utah Lake doing his own kind of fishing thing. I'm Reese Stein at your leisure at Utah Lake where the fishing's been better. But boy, with weather like this and access so good, nobody's complaining. 
In the shadow of Lady Timpanogos, Utah Lake isn't always the first choice of most Utah anglers who focus on trout, but it's a gold mine for warm water fish. And every day after school, Joshua Tallman of neighboring Saratoga Springs prowls the boat harbor in search of monsters like this big largemouth bass. That's what you call a bass right there. There's a nice one, John. Woo! Why drive all the way to Lake Powell when you can catch largemouth bass like this right here on the Wasatch Front? This beauty goes four pounds plus. Not bad for mid-January. How's fishing this time of year? Amazing. Except you get all the people down here and catching them, but yeah, it's fun. Nice fat belly on them. He's been eating good. Largemouth bass is the money species here, but Utah Lake has much more, including some nice crappie, bluegill, catfish, walleye, perch, and an abundance of white bass. David Kerneal of Eagle Mountain chases them with his fly rod. I found that they have a better fight than what we can get on the fly rod with other species. And the variety of fish you can get, you can catch a lot of different kinds of fish all in the same spot. I use a variety of techniques. Right now I'm using streamer flies trying to find some of the white bass. They're more aggressive. But I also use a lot of topwater stuff, even things like stimulators and elk hair caddis and catch a lot of the bluegill and largemouth bass and whatnot with those. And when my back was turned, Josh hooks up and lands another plump largemouth. Josh uses a rattle trap minnow imitation. How are you working it? Uh, nice and slow on the bottom. And they pick it up and then, yeah. Once in a while you do a fast retrieve, get them excited. Josh releases all his fish, keeping only photos. Another local, Richard Stevens, has had his share of big largemouth as well. Big or small, Stevens releases the bass here too. He and Josh are frustrated with what they call the Bucket Brigade, a group of game hogs they've seen carting off buckets full of white bass, bluegill, even largemouth. Between big bass, Tallman likes to toy with the crappie hiding under the dock. He uses an ice fishing rod with a purple jig and the action is non-stop. Although more do get off than stay hooked, but Josh is going to put them back anyway. Oh, that's neat. You don't know what you're going to pull out of this lake. I had no luck keeping dozens of hungry fish on. A little frustrating, but still lots of fun. Utah Lake is well known for an abundance of white bass and Carneal has landed a bunch of big ones this winter on flies. But Carneal got in real trouble last summer getting plenty of bites he didn't want. Fishing was phenomenal. I was catching lots and lots of smallmouth bass. When the mosquitoes started showing up, I didn't care too much because the fishing was crazy good. Yeah. And then about a week later, I was extremely sick. Neil was stricken with one of only two cases of West Nile virus in Utah last year and was sick for a month. He's still bugged by the disease and warns anglers. So you want to wear long sleeve shirts, long pants, um, and then cover whatever else is out with insect repellent. No matter how crazy good the fishing is, Reese Stein at your leisure on Utah Lake. The Boat Show and Water Sports Expo is here. Shop, compare, and save on hundreds of 2015 boats. It's your best time to buy. Meet and watch wakeboard pros ride the rail jam. The Boat Show, Thursday, February 5th through Sunday the 8th at the Southtown Expo. The place to buy new boats and accessories with special show financing. ABC4 Utah and CW30 invite you to the Boat Show and Water Sports Expo, February 5th through the 8th in Sandy. Save at utahboatshow.com. The Boat Show is here, better climb the board. When you made it through your busy week, it's time to rest and unwind. There's one thing that we can all agree, a getaway works every time. You're headed to the country, enjoy the comforts of your city living at Ray City RV. Sure, those who ride green log more hours in the saddle and put more miles on their sleds in one winter than some do in a lifetime. But riding more is not just about going the distance. It's about a passion that runs to the core. We built our company on this passion. Arctic riders go harder, go faster, and dream bigger. 
You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Brian Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit CedarCityAYL.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic southern Utah. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We've been having a great time out here at Sea Base. It really is a neat place, and it's also really easy to get here. You just take exit 84. That's the second Grantsville exit. Yeah, because I took the first one on yes. the way out here. And you just uh, head south on Highway 138, five miles exactly, and it'll be on your left. Yep, look to your left and you'll see it. There's signs and a, a nice complex. You'll see the domes for the water and everything. It's pretty cool. It's easy to find. We have some events coming up. The first one is the boat show. This next weekend, it's the 5th through the 8th of February. Yep, and there's, you know, obviously there's lots of fun toys there. And then the very next weekend is the RV show. Yes, February 12th through the 15th, and they're both at Southtown Expo Center. And, of course, at your leisure, we'll be at both shows. We have stickers there, so if you need one of those for your vehicle. Or if you want to sign up for our brand-new giveaway, which is a trip to Cedar City, a ski vacation. I mean, the vacation includes ski passes, two nights at the Grand Lodge, snowmobiling, and also uh, a snowcat ride. So how do you sign up for it, Darren? Well, it's really easy. You can go to our Facebook page and like us. And if you share it, you get five extra entries. Also, okay. if you like Scenic Southern Utah's page, you'll get five more entries. And you can do this every day and just build entries like crazy, and then we'll have an awesome trip to go down there and play and have a great time. That sounds great. We do have one more event to talk about. Through February... We have free snowshoeing at Cedar Breaks National Monument. And you can go down there. They supply the snowshoes. There's trails to go hiking around on, and it's beautiful this time of year. With that, you get that little white snow on those red rocks. It's awesome. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Our winner this week was spotted at Take a Friend Snowmobiling. Yep, it was a Dodge truck with license plate 545LMH. So if that's your truck, you need to call our office right away, and we have four tickets to Fast Car, which, you know, is one of my favorite places to go. So. <laughs> it is. That's awesome. <laughs> well, congratulations to our winner. And now we're going to take a look at next week's show. And while they're doing that, let's go get some lunch. I'm starving. Sounds good. Well, we've been following them for the past month, and next week, Chad and Rhea's giant RV adventure finally comes to an end as they head home by way of Sin City. What can you expect when you take an RV to Las Vegas? Well, they'll have the answer. Then Reese Stein finds out how these deer ended up hanging from a helicopter. Own the outdoors with AYL next week. Well, next week's show looks fantastic. It really does. But we've had a great time out here in Tooele County, out in Grantsville, and we're at American Burgers, which they have one in Thule and here. Yes, it's, so. a, it's a Tooele County staple. It is. <laughs> I, every time I come out here, i got to go to American Burgers. That's so. right. Well, it's been great out here. And, you know, you think of Grantsville as a small town, but it's really, it's got everything you need out here. Yep. There's lodging, there's food, there's gas. So when you come out here, you don't have to bring everything you own to get here. <laughs> That's exactly right. And it's like that awesome small town feel to it. It is. It's really a comfortable town. So remember to get out with your family and friends and enjoy the great outdoors at, at your leisure. Because it's County. great here. It is great. It's great and nice. Yes. Welcome back to at your leisure. We're here at Sea Base. Oh, some of us are. <laughs> leisure, we're out here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chad Booth from At Your Leisure. I hope you just enjoyed the YouTube video that you just watched. Now, remember, we come up with new videos like this every single week, so you might want to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a single story that we have out. Now, you can also share us with all of your friends on social media. Here's how to do it right here, and that way they can have fun too. If you want detailed information, we of course have our website, AYLTV.com, and from there you can find out which television stations we broadcast on so you never have to spend a day without your fix of family-oriented outdoor recreation adventure. Plus, don't forget we have really cool contests.